and look where I am the Enterprise Bridge making it so here with me is Houston Huddleston you've seen him at a WonderCon Anaheim you met him a few, few, few months ago it seems like years ago but just a few months ago so for the few people who may not have heard about it tell why am I sitting on the bridge what is this all about we are creating a thing called the Hollywood Science Fiction Museum and it's the first time there has ever been really anything like this it's going to be a museum that houses all the greatest science fiction and some fantasy uh, props and costumes and cars and robots and sets all over, from all over the world and it's going to also be educational it's going to be a nonprofit educational museum that teaches real science through science fiction so it'll have space and science and also educate people in costumes and makeup and filmmaking so, so how, how did it all get started though uh, this bridge is how it all began. Uh, I found the bridge, it was about to be thrown out. It was uh, one week away from being gone forever. And I didn't know what the hell I was going to do with it, to be honest, but I just knew it was a piece of history and I had to save it. So I spent, to me, a lot of money. It was $7,000 to ship it. And I, uh, long story short, I got this incredible board of directors uh, behind me and uh, Ronald D. Moore, uh, Rick Sternbach, uh, Andrew Probert, and uh, David Gerald and, uh, and Doug Drexler, and also the man sitting to your left, uh, Timothy Earls, who is the guy who worked on, he worked on Star Trek, designed uh, ships for that, but also designed a little ship called Serenity for Firefly. Uh, but yeah, that's how it all began and we're almost two years later and it's turned into this museum because basically there was no place to put our bridge. We had the original series bridge and the next gen bridge and there's no other museum in the world that could house it and do with it what we want to do. So hell, we'll make our own. That's how it started. Yeah, we'll talk to Timothy in just a little bit, but before before we go on, yeah. when you say you found the, the bridge in the trash, what, was it the complete set was sitting on now? Was it in pieces? What, what, what was it exactly that you found? It was the entire set. Uh, it was just, it was in pieces and it was just, the, the captain's chair was sitting on its side with a big rip through the back of it. It had been sitting outside for five years, being rained on and, you know, the, the birds urinating on it, whatever, you know, I mean, it was just pathetic. And these huge pieces of fiberglass, it, uh, I mean, when you put it all together, it's 50 feet long, 12 feet tall, and 25 feet wide. So it's massive. There is, you know, this that would take up a, a good chunk of this convention center at Comic-Con if we did that. That's how huge it is. So we, we just brought some of the chairs and computers that people, that's enough. I mean, that makes people happy. So, uh, yeah, that we got that, and the original series bridge was in the flats. We're all sitting up like that, all up against each other. And I didn't honestly know what it was. I, I'd never seen it from that perspective before. It took, I was with some complete geeks, I mean, more geek than I am. And they saw it and they looked at it and they said, this is the original, so this is Captain Kirk's bridge. Yeah, that's the carpet that they used for the cylinder. That's the floor. Those are the buttons that they, so, oh my God, we got two for the price of one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's how, that's how that began. But. I got I was at the right place at the right time. Got very lucky and it was crazy and stupid enough to want to save it. So yeah. Yeah, if I had found it, I know it'd be my living room right now. But that's just me. Uh, hold on, away team. Just always wanted to do that. So Timothy, let's talk, let's talk to you. You've worked on a few projects that our audience and everyone here at Comic Con may have heard about. So tell us about about those first. Uh, well, actually, the first project I was on was Babylon Five. I worked on that uh, series for two seasons and the spin-off Crusade. Uh, after that I went straight over to Star Trek Voyager and not long after that I did uh, Firefly and the uh, movie Serenity. Yeah, few shows like I said that our audience uh, may have heard they, about. Yeah, they might be familiar, yes. So, so how, did, how did you get involved with, with, with Houston's project? Uh, that was interesting. I think we met on um, I think it was WonderCon actually last year. Martin Netter, that's right. <coughs> Yeah. Uh, yes, Martin Netter, uh, a gentleman from Germany who had quite a number of props. He was in LA and he gave me a call, wanted to see if I wanted to go out to, to get a bite. So uh, I did. We walked back to his hotel and who was sitting in the lobby was Houston here. So that was our first introduction. And when he told you what he wanted to do, that he has 
the bridge, the real bridge. You know, what, what, what did you think? I thought that was very cool, and I thought the idea of him trying to save it was was pretty admirable, because a lot of the things that uh, you know we create in in film and uh, television uh, becomes dis disposable, and uh, I think a lot of these artifacts need to be saved. Now, now, as a designer, I mean, it it happens. Some some of the some of the things you design are going to get destroyed, but for this one. Why, why did you why did you agree with Houston and say no we we have to save this one I love next generation and uh, what's that Ooh, that's, that's true and uh, uh, Andrew Probert one of my favorite designers this was his design and, and uh, that got me very interested so now it's going to the science fiction museum for for that what why do we need a science fiction museum uh, well, as I mentioned I think uh, there needs to, reposit needs to be a repository for these artifacts, and I consider them artifacts. These are not, uh, you know, uh, memorabilia or just, um, you know, throwaway props. I mean, these are literal pieces of film history. Now, now this is just your opinion uh, from someone who's been in the biz. Uh, Sci-fi today it tends to be a. a post-apocalyptic, a lot of gloom and doom. Instead of the message right here, the Roddenberry message, you know, bright future, as long as we get there together. Why, why do you think Hollywood is going more towards the end of the world, no hope? Uh, well, I think it's, it's, it's become a more cynical age, I think. And um, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think uh, there needs to be some counterpoint to a lot of things that uh, Roddenberry had, uh, you know, portrayed in all of his series. Uh, and I think, in a way, that makes his message more germane. Is having this type of, you know, uh, mentality right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, directed from somebody who's in the biz. So, so thanks, Timothy, for that. Uh, back to you, Houston. Um, how can how can our listeners get involved, and how can they help you guys out? Get, get, get make this a react, make it so. We did a Kickstarter that ended about a month ago. That was uh, we got so much amazing support from celebrities who got the word out about it for our uh, Hollywood Science Fiction Museum. George Takei, major, major uh, helper on that. And, oh my. Uh, yeah, exactly. And from that we raised n over $93,000, which got us to the next step where we now can go to the big money uh, corporations and millionaires, billionaires, all that kind of jazz. Uh, the day-to-day -day stuff uh, it comes right now from the fans and we've got a website called the Hollywood sci com and uh, we were also on Facebook but if you go to Hollywood sci com that will take you to our Facebook our Twitter uh, show tons of you know get just join our mailing list and spread the word about us if you're able to afford one of our lovely t-shirts uh, this is a prototype right here because our they're not uh, in yet but uh, this has all a Pretty much all the ships and all the TV shows, a lot of them anyway, that are going to be represented on our uh, in our museum, including Firefly, because we're going to have a Firefly Day that is, to my knowledge, going to be uh, one of the most comprehensive, if not the most comprehensive, reunion of Firefly people since Comic Con like two years ago. Uh, but also, it will include the writers, the the artists, the directors, the producers of that show. As well as the cast, so I'm. We're gonna, and we're going. We're talking about creating the uh, cockpit for Serenity. Right there, right. That's why. That's why you, everybody's gonna go. A one-to-one -one cockpit of Serenity that people can sit on, and and you know, say shiny, whatever. You know, I mean, it, it, play with the dinosaurs. Yeah. But yeah, that's something that's really necessary, and this whole museum is what's necessary at this time in this place. Yeah, that, that's actually what I was gonna ask you. Is, is Besides, you mentioned the uh, the firefly. What, what what can we expect to find in, in the museum? Well, uh, there's I I worked out a deal to get a lot of props from Star Trek, obviously, also from Battlestar Galactica, and Firefly. Uh, some f from Firefly. We're still working on that. Uh, I'm going to get a lot from Star Wars. There are a lot of costumes and masks and props that I've obtained from a few collectors. Uh, also Babylon 5 and uh, uh, of course both bridges the original series and next gen but they're you know that's where fans come in these fans have collected stuff for years they have no place to put them a woman contacted me has Spock's ears 
and she she wants to loan them to us and you know permanent uh, temporary donations loans whatever as long as we get to display it and fans get to see it and it inspires them that's what this whole thing's about yeah, so again Houston Tunnelson thanks a lot Timothy Earl thanks a lot for that too you guys help them out as much as you can and help them make it so Warp 1 let's go